Welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Moba, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, put some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Mark Ellis. Welcome one and all to the best movie news show in the entire galaxy. We're very excited here on a Taco Tuesday to bring you guys the latest in cinematic discussion. And Ashley, somebody on this panel got to see an extra 30 minutes of a movie that came out earlier this year. Who would that be? Was it John Schnatt? It might have been. Well, that's right. You know what? I saw Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, the ultimate edition last night in the movie theaters with a bunch of other sweaties like Umberto and Frosty and Dennis, a couple other people, JBX or whatever that guy's name was in there too. Bunch of uh, movie fans, movie talk fans. Thanks for coming up and saying, hey, I got to say, you know what? I've been very negative about Batman v Superman. No. Dawn of Justice, the theatrical cut. Let's just call it that. Um, and I stand by my negative uh, feelings about it. I did not like that version of the movie. But uh, lo and behold, I see an extra 30 minutes cut into this film, and then they rearranged a lot of scenes, and it actually works as a movie now. It felt like it was, a, to be honest, it felt like a shorter version because it flows so much better. It made more sense. And, you know, look, it's not rocket science to put together all the story plots points, but honestly, it was so jarringly cut together or at least sliced together the hack job that they did with the theatrical cut that watching this version was so entertaining. And I actually cared about Clark Kent because you actually get to see him do stuff instead of pouting in a corner like a crybaby in the theatrical cut. Most of the minutes that they put back were sequences with Bruce Wayne talking with Alfred or Clark Kent investigating who is the Batman over in Gotham. And those scenes were really important. They also put in all of the subtext and subplots that they had cut out about the sequences in Africa, the bullet theory, Lois Lane doing a little a bit more journalism, things like that that help you kind of follow the storyline, especially with Lex Luthor being the villain. So all those things made for a much more satisfying film. And I actually ended up liking the movie. So I highly recommend checking out the ultimate cut, especially if you're like me and didn't like the theatrical. Well, cut. that's a hell of an opening salvo there, <laughs> John Schnepp. <laughs> Never that, thought I'd say that. Your opinion on that movie might be very surprising to our other panelists. Who's that, Ashley? It's Christian Harlow. I went to sleep at 9.30 last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's shocking to hear John Schnepp totally change his tune about this movie because I know how disappointed you are. I know you wanted to love Batman vs. Right. Superman, and now you see 30 extra minutes of footage, and it totally changed your mind. Right. Everyone knows I'm on Marvel's payroll. Now I'm on DC's <laughs> payroll, too. What? <laughs> <laughs> right now on Collider Video's own YouTube channel, which you're currently watching, you can check out John Schnepp, I believe, Dennis, and a few other uh, sweaties. Frosty and Umberto. Frosty and Umberto came back here to the studio and they did a review of The Ultimate Cut. So you guys can check that out right now, see if everybody else on the panel agreed with Mr. Schnepp that it totally changed their mind about this movie. So now you have a lot more confidence going into Justice League, I imagine. I do. I mean, look, it didn't completely 100% change my mind. There's still all the Martha. There's the plot points. Why did he not know about who Bruce Wayne is? For You know what I mean? There's certain things that are still there. There's a lot of problems, script issue problems, I would call them. But the flow of the movie is completely different than the theatrical cut. Sequences were rearranged, little moments were added back in, even 10 or 15 second pieces of dialogue are now there that just help everything move forward. So literally it is watching a different cut of the film. So by the time you get to that last 30 minutes, it feels a lot better, it feels more natural and you care, the stakes are there. Christian, so. we got to go get ourselves a Blu-ray, it sounds like. Yeah, I think it's coming in pretty soon, actually, because we got a notice from Warner Brothers. They're sending it over, so as soon as that happens, you and I will review that on Schmoes. Absolutely, we will. All right, let's kick off with our first official topic of the day. What do we got up first? Miss Mova. After a long legal battle with Courtney Solomon, a director of the first Dungeons and Dragons movie and the rights holder to the film franchise, Warner Brothers is finally making their first casting addition to the live action movie with Deadline reporting that Fault in Our Stars actor Ansel Elgort is in early negotiations to star. Elgort has been a main actor in the Divergent sci-fi franchise and appeared in the Chloe Grace Moretz led remake of Carrie. Goosebumps director Rob Letterman is directing Dungeons and Dragons based off a screenplay by The Conjuring 2 writer David Leslie Johnson. In a recent interview, he described the movie as a Guardians of the Galaxy tone movie in a Tolkien-like universe. A release date has yet to be set. Mark, thoughts on Ansel Elgort leading a Dungeons & Dragons movie? Ah. 
I heard a lot of stuff in that read, Ash, that I'm not a huge fan of, but Ansel Elgort, look, he would have been my choice for Han Solo way back. We were just looking at who the, the, these kids are that could be stepping into those huge boots. When you talk about him being in a Dungeons & Dragons movie, look, he was very good in The Fault in Our Stars, okay? I've seen him in other projects where I'm like, yeah, okay, he was just kind of there, whatever. I don't know that he is going to be the addition to Dungeons & Dragons that's necessarily going to turn the tide into giving me a lot of confidence in this movie going forward because I'm not sure that Rob Letterman is the right guy for Dungeons and Dragons. I am still not sold on that tone of Guardians in the Galaxy in a Tolkien universe works for this property. It sounds like they want to do it sounds like they're passionate about Dungeons and Dragons, which is good. They want to make a good movie. They want to get some measure of revenge for what happened in the early 2000s with that Jeremy Irons awful oh, misfire. Get come back on the dragon. Where's I my dragon? Can't get all that jacked about this yet though. It just seems like okay, well, Dungeons and Dragons, it's a popular property. We got it back. We got to do something with it. So, Ansel Elgort, I think he's got talent. I think he's got a bright future in movies. I'm not sure that this is going to turn the tide as far as how I feel about Dungeons and Dragons. How about you, Mr. Harwell? Well, the good news is that they wrestled it away from a guy that was basically just like kind of peeing on the pro the property, <laughs> and they're going, "Get it, give it back, give it back." And he's like, "No, I'm too busy <laughs> pissing all over." <laughs> and then they finally got it back from him. So the good news is it has to be better than that one. Sure. Um, but the bad news <clears throat> is, like you said, I don't know if we're going to be able to put a Guardians of the Galaxy tone on this particular property because you and I say this every time when it comes to a fantasy movie I always root for fantasy movies whether it's Warcraft or even The Huntsman I'm always rooting for those movies to work and I, I'm always hoping for Lords of the Rings uh, mm -hmm. I'm always hoping for that but I, Lord of the Rings, like Lords of the Ring, Lord of the Rings. I haven't slept. Um, Lords of the Rings. Lords, Lords of the Rings. Ring. Ring. There are a bunch of yeah. us, and there's that's, this yeah, the one a, the ring. Though. I'm always hoping for Lords of the Ringses, um, <laughs> but I'm always hoping for those, and, and you usually get something like Seventh Son. And this is where I think that this could go if they're not oh, careful. Yeah. If they're not careful and they and they don't treat it with the respect to that, because remember the legions of fans that D and D has, and right. what you could ultimately do for it, you could make this a great fantasy, very similar to what I was talking about yesterday with Masters of the Universe. I think that you could maybe not make it a complete serious drama, but you you could be careful with the tone. Don't just try to capture the success of Guardians of the Galaxy because it right. worked. It, that worked for a reason because that's the tone that that movie called for. Does this call for that? I don't necessarily think so, but I also haven't seen the trailer, so I don't know the tone that they're going for yet and whether or not it just sounds like something they shouldn't do. Schnepp, you belly up to the fantasy table. Idealia Ansel Elgort, Idealia right. Rob Letterman, and it's right. Dungeons and Dragons. Is this going to be like Lord of the Rings, or is this going to be like seventh. I chuck two of those cards away. I'll leave it to you to figure out which two I throw away. <laughs> One I keep. Um, you know what? I, it bugs me when they do that. Like you could have said that about the Seventh Son. It's kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy meets Lords of the Lords of the Ring. <laughs> Lords of the Ring. Lords right. of the Ring. See, of it's musical. Not that Come, you're making me say this I now. Know. Lords of the Ring. I know it's Lord of the Rings. Chill. Yeah. Lords of the Ring, though, is a brand new epic yeah. that's coming, Guardians of the Galaxy style, with a little bit of Lord of the Rings you mean mixed Guardian in. Guardian of the Galaxies? Guardian of the Galaxies. You guys yes. are putting S's in all the wrong places. I think the, S the S's are where we want them to be. It's a subpar fantasy <laughs> film. <laughs> it's a. <laughs> It's a subpar fantasy film. <laughs> Move along, nerdlings. It's an above average fantasy film. It's, oh, it's, it's an above average. Above average. Above average. Ellis, above. Listen, listen. Here's the average. Listen, it's here. just above. Here is the average. Fine. Being this is, by ship. This is where it is here. Above. It's above. Slightly. Right there. So it sounds That's like you guys don't really want to yes. see Dungeons and Dragons yes. with Ansel Elgort all that if they, if, uh, <clears throat> if they end up getting. <laughs> sticking that nerd voice for a minute. <laughs> if they end up keeping. If they recast Jeremy Irons, I mean. Bad you healing. know what? I just want it to be good can we i agree with you they wrestled away from that guy he made a he made a movie and then two straight to dvd or yeah. i even i don't even know if <laughs> the like third one was released <laughs> he's like i'm still yeah. pissing on it and now there will be smurfs yeah. in dungeons yeah. and dragons so i just want a good one i don't care if they have to use that stupid tag like tag guardians of the galaxy on there just to help sell you know the idea it's like you know it's a kid out of time out of past thrown into some adventure whatever it's like 
it's that kind of thing. I just want it to be good. I love yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. I want to see a good version of that movie so I could actually proudly say they've done a good adaptation. So will Guy, it be great? Yeah, Guy will Gax it be will be terrible, happy. or will it be da, 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 an above average fantasy <laughs> average, film? Average, right above. I don't know why you have to be in my shot to make the point. <laughs> Ashley, please rescue me. Collider.com, a last report on the Minecraft movie back in February, learning in an exclusive interview with producer Roy Lee that a movie would be happening and was part of a multiverse where humans can enter the world. Now we finally have a release date for the movie with Deadline reporting. Minecraft is slated to open in 3D and IMAX on May 24, 2019. A date far enough away, no other movie is scheduled against it, with the closest competition coming from Disney slash Marvel's Avengers Infinity War Part 2 on May 3rd. A cast has not been announced for the project. Christian, thoughts on a Minecraft movie finally coming to theaters? Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a pro- it's it's a popular a popular property, and they're gonna you know it, it, I think it works for three D. They're gonna try to do what everybody else is doing with these properties. I mean, for God's sakes, they're making a Pez movie. You should make a Minecraft movie. Right? Um, is it something that I'm gonna be rushing it out and <laughs> wanting to see? No, I don't know enough about Minecraft. I'm not gonna pretend that I do. But I think that if they have a property that they think could work, it absolutely calls for three D. I think this is a property that does call for it. Where sometimes they just throw it out there for you no. Know, no reason but this could be fun this could be something that they put together that is really good or it could be an absolute flaming piss box i have no idea but i i don't know um so great make a minecraft movie good for you i understand what you're saying but i don't want to set the bar as to what movies need to be made by the pez movie like like, well they're making a pez movie we might as well do all these other movies like minecraft i've never played it i know it's a hugely popular game maybe there is enough storyline to turn into a movie i'm not gonna get all excited because oh they had this release date in 2009 19 and nothing else is around there right well it's it's three years away there's going to be other stuff that gets added around that release date there's going to be competition for minecraft but this seems like a movie that they plant their flagpole in and then you have to sit back and say okay well how does the pez movie do how does all these tetris movies do how do all of these other video game adaptations that we're kind of questioning whether they need to be movies do before we get to minecraft so I mean, I understand from a pitch standpoint that, hey, it's a popular game. It's got a built-in fan base. We have this cool 3D technology that we can tell this story with. I'm just not going to get excited about it yet. How about you, Schnapp? Did I wake up in 1978? <laughs> this feel, look, look, look at that picture. It looks like an Atari 2600 graphic. I like the pig. Is it's that like, a pig? It, it's a box-like thing representing a pig. I mean, yeah. we, here we are. It's like, I know it's a throwback, and it's that fun. Like, look, this is the kind of graphics that we all grew up with. Grandpa running around with a little weird joystick, get, rubs your thumb the wrong way, and it's, you, it's got a bruise on it this is just i i i'm i just don't get it i know kids like building stuff they're like look at this weird cave i built i <laughs> screw off man i hate minecraft it's just told kids to screw off yeah all you kids building little dumb 2600 <laughs> art caves and look at my strange box that i've i'm inside kick a soccer ball yeah. Yeah. Well, How about go outside? And why How about did they, that? Yeah, go outside and play, throw a ball around. A bunch of old turds you guys are. I mean, hey. if, if the guys like Minecraft this year, they want to make a movie for it. This poor kid is was in a, I can't wait to hear the guys talk about Minecraft. And uh, this guy's telling me he's dumb for making a cave. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me take that back. You're dumb for making a castle. Better. There's a lot of castles already. Yeah. Make a good There's castle. There's some kid that really wanted to see a Pez movie, and you just made fun of some kid with his Pez movie. That kid has problems. Look, I can't wait for the emoji movie with the weird spaghetti yeah. legs. I don't need this weird 2600 game. Oh. Taking three years, they should put it out now. How much did it cost them? $5 to make this thing? 13. You could make the movie online. They just have kids building the props. Aww. Here, build me another castle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Free. There's going to be a lot of, I'm sure, brand name vocal talent in this movie. There's going to be a lot Woo! of bells. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hashtag John Schnepp hates my cave. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of money for a voiceover because we've spent nothing on the production value of this weird throwback from ni- 1978. I really hope you get tweets of, <laughs> why do you hate my cave? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just hope that just keeps coming in. I hate in. your cave. <laughs> you hate my some cave. Kid built a Sad cave face. and he dedicated it to John Schnepp. Yeah, He's like, the Schnepp cave. Yeah. cave. And Look, then, now oh. it's a big skull on it. Let now. me clarify something. I don't mind or <laughs> care caves. if people play Minecraft. I've seen tons of very happy kids running around with these pixelated swords. Mm-hmm. They're in another universe. They're building stuff. That's awesome. 
I don't care about this movie. I think it's stupid. And oh. also, screw off, kids. All right, so we had Dungeons and Dragons. Get off of my lawn. We had Minecraft. How do we possibly follow that with our next story? Well, don't you worry. After the Lego movie hit theaters to rave reviews and huge box office back in 2014, Warner Brothers made plans to continue its Lego film franchise with a number of sequel spinoffs. There's the Lego Batman movie making its way into theaters on February 10, 2017, and the Lego movie sequel due out to years later on February 2019. In between those films is the Ninjago movie, a film based on the Ninjago Masters of Spinjitzu toys. We haven't heard much about the movie since its release date was announced, but thanks to a report from Brickset.com, the film's voice cast has been revealed in a catalog at the 2016 Licensing Expo. The lineup includes Jackie Chan as Master Wu, Dave Franco as Lloyd, Michael Pena as Kai, Abby Jacobson as Naya, Kumail Ninjiani as Jay, Zach Woods as Zane and Fred Armisen as Cole. Ninjago is the story of six young ninjas tasked with the tasked with defending their island home called Ninjago. By night, they're gifted warriors using their skills and awesome fleet of vehicles to fight villains and monsters. By day, they're ordinary teens struggling against their greatest enemy, high school. The Ninjago movie is due in theaters on September 22nd, 2017. Schnepp, what do you think about the cast for Ninjago? Oh, it's an interesting eclectic cast. I mean, there's a lot of uh, like big pluses. Abby Jacobson, anything she's in, Broad City, she's fantastic. She's funny. She can improv. So I'm sure I'm looking forward to that. You love uh, Dave Franco. Uh, Dave Franco is very funny. I, I needed him to boost me on that. I wasn't going to forget <laughs> about it. He's like, hey, hey, before you finish, you love Dave Franco, right? <laughs> yes. Like, Christian, I Builds caves in Minecraft. He's, he's still holding that against me because I thought he would be a good Han Solo. He's like, ha! I remember the flipping tables. <laughs> Schnapp, how dare you say that? Put his helmet on. I like on. Dave Franco. I just didn't think he was right for He had to go uh, confer with the emperor. Like, yeah. Kill cool Don Snip. Yeah. Our yeah. first three stores are full of guys who are almost Han Solo, and thankfully yeah. not. Yeah, well, look, Michael Dave Franco is very funny. You saw Neighbors, too. He's good. So, yeah, I like Dave And Franco. he's in the, what is it, the, the smash-up artist, the flappy artist? What's it called? God bless you. What is it called? Oh, the disa- it was called The Disaster Artist, but it's, it's, What's it called they now? changed the name of it. The da- oh, Disaster man. Artist was the that perfect was a great name. It's the movie based on the room that's yeah. going to be was having so, yeah. uh, James Franco is involved in it. Yeah. Tommy yeah, was Dave so Frank might have a small cameo in it. So, right. so let's get back to Ninjago. Okay, Ninjago. Oh, yeah. oh, my God, Ninjago. Yeah, Fred Armisen, very funny dude. SNL, he's a musician. He plays tons of different characters. Uh, Kumail. Oh, so many different great, like, I mean, I would never see this. It's like, like that's what I'm saying. It's like a weird bizarre salad that somebody just yeah. chucked together. It's a mutant salad with some kale in there, a cob salad, it's a bunch of weirdness chucked in there. Um, and then you have Jackie Chan. I'm like, what? Because it's called Ninjago, I guess? I don't know, you know. But it's weird. So I guess we're going to find out how good it is. I actually like this idea. If you're going to be making a bunch of Lego-themed movies anyway, Ninjago seems like a right property to capitalize on. Like Schnapp, I do agree that the vocal talent, it's a lot of up-and-coming stars as opposed to like, oh, hey, look at this A-list or look at this A-list. I don't really care about all that stuff necessarily when you're making an animated movie that I already care about seeing. So yeah, we have our Batman. We have our Lego movie sequel. This seems like the right place to go if they want to do like a Lego movie a year or maybe even more of them. I don't want it to get oversaturated with Lego. I'm the guy that doesn't want to see more than one Star Wars movie a year, so I definitely don't need to see more than one Lego movie a year, but if Ninjago fits with it, the tone that they're going for as far as the Lego movie brand, I like that they're doing it with this property. How about you? Yeah, I agree. I think it sounds pretty cool. It sounds almost like Kung Fu Panda meets 21 Jump Street in, in a Lego world, you know? Right. It's, uh, so I like I like the sound of it. The cast, though, I mean, you always get this kind of eclectic mix with... with that's the beauty of being able to do the voice acting. Um, and... Uh, you know, going up totally not. Uh, Wait, just don't forget to talk about Dave Franco. I was just, say, just busting your balls on Dave Franco. There, uh, actually, the guy's pretty no, pretty good. I mean, hilarious. he's even in those silly now you see me movies. He's he's pretty good in those. I just didn't think he was the right fit for Han Solo, and thank goodness no one else did either. Um, but it comes down to what I think that this cast is going to do, and I think it could be a lot of fun. I think it'd be funny. I think that this is a. It sounds cool. I like Jackie Chan in the front and center there for for the ma- what's yeah. this a master what. Uh, you Master, Will. Master, Master Will. Master Will. So that is something that could be fun. I mean, it's it just, I'm going to repeat myself that let's see the trailer. Let's see. But the, the team's in place, like the production team, the voice team. So, yeah, it sounds cool. This comes out September 2017. You have Minecraft coming out in May of 2019. Which, quickly, which one does better at the domestic box office? Minecraft. I don't... <sighs> we got a Minecraft from Schnapp. Uh, yeah. Even though he loves Dave Franco, yeah, he's going I'll, against I'll, Franco's I'll movie. I'll take Minecraft just because I think that it's got a, a, 
big, uh, bigger fan base. Okay. You, uh, fans are going to hold you guys. Let me just picks. let me just say, unless they change it to Legos Ninjago, is if they just call it Ninjago, I don't even know what that is. is that a sandwich? What I think is you're going to clearly know that Lego in there, you're right. involved in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they to, just got to yeah. make you know, Lego Ninjago. Presents. Yeah, because yeah. Ninjago sounds bizarre and just weird. The whole Harder poster to sell. is Lego, and then just a little Ninjago. It's like a strange sock, a constrictive sock. No, but you're right. Ninjago. Though, you got, but but you're right though. You have to sell it on it, because that that's going to confuse people. That, yeah. What the hell is this? I don't know what that is. But if you Lego presents, yeah. Ninjago, oh, then cool. it has a chance yeah. to get some of that tasty Lego money. I yeah, agree. very interesting release date with that September. So I'm going to go with Minecraft as well. And now we're going to move on to Wendy, who's been monitoring the chat room since we kicked off this Fandango. What are they saying in the chat room? All the way back to our Batman versus Superman Ultimate Edition comments, and then our main stories as well. Well, actually, some of the chat actually went and saw the BVS Ultimate Cut, and they thought it was better as well, so they agree with you, Schnepp. For the Dungeons & Dragons story, even though we haven't seen any trailers for this, a lot of the chat is already calling this movie a flop. Time Signature MMA says D&D has potential to become a great franchise, but it has to be done right. It's going to be a difficult task. And for the Minecraft movie, uh, the chat doesn't seem to be all that into the Minecraft movie, but they're saying it's probably going to make a ton of money because of how popular the game is. Tyrus SQW says, like, I love Minecraft when it first came out, but it got old and it's going to be really old by the time it actually came out, comes out. And for the Ninjago movie cast, they were liking the voice talent, not really into the movie. Matt Thompson says, my kids love the Ninjago TV show and this cast looks really cool. I'll take them to see it. It doesn't need to be quite as good as Lego movie, but close. All right, that's our take and your guys' take on our main topics. Now we move on to buy or sell. This is a part of the show where Ashley's going to give us a topic. We'll say whether we buy it or sell it, and then zaniness will generally ensue. What's up first? The first trailer for writer-director Jeff Baina's R-rated Sundance comedy Joshi has been released, starring Silicon Valley's Thomas Middle di Middleditch as a man who tries to enjoy what would have been his bachelor party. The movie also features Adam Pally, Nick Kroll, Brett Gelman, Alex Ross Perry, Jenny Slate, and Aubrey Plaza. Joshi is a comedy about a man whose girlfriend has just died after committing suicide just months before their wedding. Josh's friends has already put down the deposit on a vacation to Ojai for his bachelor party, so they decide to proceed with their plans and turn it into an opportunity to cheer up their grieving friend. The movie hits theaters on August 12th. Mark, buy or sell the new trailer for Joshi. I buy it big time. It looks very funny. It looks like there's a dark comedy element to it, but it seems like a very funny premise in the wheelhouse of The Hangover without going so big in blockbuster hijinks more smaller contained more of an independent feel but the talent involved in this movie I mean obviously Thomas Middleditch from Silicon Valley it's one of my favorite shows to watch right now uh, Nick Kroll is an absolute comic genius right now he's a superstar on his way I love watching this trailer and how funny it was how there were some endearing moments even within the two minutes I watched it I think it's gonna be a little more dramatic a little more heartfelt than something you would see with the hangover but there's also gonna be that element of craziness going on mm -hmm. so i'm big on joshy right now how about you snap yeah i'm buying it too i really enjoyed the trailer and i like what you said it's like it has that it's a smaller a smaller comedy but still with all the laughs i mean I, that's one some of these bigger comedies where it's like now they're on the freeway and cars are exploding and the, they raise these stakes that are unrealistic and what's the funniest thing about when you go see comedies is laughing and seeing situations that are something you can relate to. This is definitely something you don't want to relate to, but people have all been in these kinds of situations where your friend, you got to cheer him up, you do things for your friend, sometimes it doesn't work out. This looks like, you know, a really bad situation that could be a comedy gold. I mean, I think Brett Gelman, I mean, some of the cast in there, you're like, wow, these people are just <laughs> waiting to explode off the screen. They're funny and like you've seen them in other smaller things. This, They're taking a good chance with a really good uh, cast of comedians and definitely the guy from Silicon Valley. So everything about it, I, yeah, I love the trailer. Christian, you want to make a three buys? Yeah, you're going to get a third buy here because I, when I covered uh, Sundance for Fandango, I got to interview these guys uh, oh, nice. for, at Sundance. And we, the, the thing is, is exactly what you're talking about with this cast is you can tell if there's a cast together and you're, first of all, you're interviewing them and they're not really vibing and there's no, it doesn't seem to have that energy, then that's going to reflect what happened on the set. And that was not the case when I was in, they, they were on point. It was like they, they were all these friends. It felt like, and I felt like I was, I didn't see the film, but from looking at the trailer, you could feel like you were interviewing those people um, that were in the actual movie because it was, they're that 
close and at least they made it look like it mm -hmm. and they had that type of comedic timing just in the interview so watching this trailer and seeing and it goes back to what you were saying they didn't go over the top to a place where i go i'm not buying it anymore right. even that line with the kid was like and you offered my son cocaine <laughs> i'm like okay i could definitely see that character so far doing that yeah. you know and yeah. i and i don't it doesn't seem like just like a gimmick oh let's offer the kid cocaine that'll right. be funny it's more of that's probably they probably got so messed up that the kid came in he's like i wouldn't have had this lined up i like the conversation we're having and i like the <laughs> The, the 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 overall reason the why they're doing this and yeah. it's it's um it to me seems like something that could be a very surprising heartwarming comedy so yes. I, I buy the trailer Ashley I'm feeling hot I want to go for four buys at the table did you okay. see the Joshy trailer what would you do I with do. it I do I buy it I love Adam Pally I think that's how you say his last name and I love Nick Kroll so much the one thing I sell in this is why would you go to a bachelor party in Ojai who does that can I ask a question I and, and, and maybe I'm a dummy here I heard the term Ojai and I have no idea where it is it's or what literally it is. it's it's near here it's like a couple hours away yeah. there's yeah. nothing to do no but it's, it's I a, actually went to a bachelor party like that oh my gosh Snorefest did you guys have a sleepover yeah, but it, but it was but the thing was it was it, in above that was the, that was the yeah. joke above that was the average. joke and my wife said the same thing she's like what do you got she's like of course you can go stay as long as you want that's yeah, ridiculous exactly. it's, it's not Vegas high, yeah. um but that was my my friend that just wanted to hang out with his friends and just wanted to grill and go to play pool yep. and do these that's all there there are bachelor parties that I certainly didn't have you did like drugs that. And we Ashley, Ashley, you could do as many drugs as you want. You're in Ojai. Right. It's a land of hippies. <laughs> but you just yeah. go up into the mountains and do whatever the hell you want. I was want. in the mountains. That's where I was. It's out in the mountains. Right. You get drunk. Land, huh? Just don't fall off the mountain. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Well, that's that's big, all you got to do. Gift. Yeah, I know. Well, you got to yeah, keep well. everybody together, you know. Have you guys ever had a buddy who was like getting married and and then like 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 something happened? Maybe not like like his girlfriend committed Aww. suicide, but but it's like they, they just broke up for whatever reason. Yeah. But, but you still wanted to go have that male bonding experience of a bachelor party. We tried to convince my friend. To, to, to still do it after us too after Ed Bruggeman he's just like nah I'm good he went to a bar and Ellis, found somebody else you just have to have your friends hang out more often man I just, you don't need a I bachelor do. party to have parties dude <laughs> maybe I just need to go to Ohio. <laughs> you're just having an above average experience with thank you. I just want to raise that bar a little bit very much now it looks like you're fanning me thank you to my <laughs> creepy servants all right, Ash, what's our next trailer that we might Hello. be buying or selling? Summit Premiere and Miramax have released the first trailer for The Ninth Life of Louis Drax, a film that centers on a young boy, Louis, played by Aiden Longworth, who has survived eight near-death experiences but plunges off a cliff on his ninth birthday. While he survives the fall, he stays in a coma, and it's up to his doctor, played by Jamie Dornan, to find out the truth about what happened while also falling for Louis's mother, played by Sarah Gadon. Actor Max Minghella wrote the screenplay for the film based on the best-selling novel and is directed by The Hills Have Eyes, Alexander Aja. The film opens on September 2nd and also stars Aaron Paul, Oliver Platt, Molly Parker, and Barbara Hershey. Christian Byers saw the first trailer for The Ninth Life of Louis Drax. I'm going to buy it, even though I don't really know what the hell's going on in the trailer. And because I was, I've been following, like, because Alexander Aja was supposed to have a big career. Mm -hmm. I remember being, when I was back at Warner Brothers, we were talking about the, Aja's name was all over the place as far as being like the next guy. And he's really. Like Ashley said, the credit was still the Hills Have right. Eyes. We haven't heard much from Didn't him. Did he but do I, Piranha? Maybe Piranha but, 3D, the first. Piranha. Did he? But I, I don't. I don't know. But like that. That was the thing is that I, I was always expecting to hear his name more. So when I saw his name at the end, of this I said, "Oh, that makes sense," because he's kind of that kind of visual director, and you see all the kind of creepy water when the guy, when the kids sleep in the bed. But this, but Tremblay, right? That's the reason I really want to see it. That kid is something else, man. I want to see what he's going to do next. I still don't know what the hell's happening in this trailer though so i i tentatively buy it because i'm curious to see the directing of asha and i'm curious to see what happens with uh Trumbull. you totally ruined this segment for me because yeah. you brought up piranha 3d oh, and you then did? i just went on ask jeeves and apparently he did direct piranha mm. 3d so not 3d d not 3d no not the no that was gulliger yeah. but, yeah. but the first one which i hated too oh. so the, the hills have eyes i thought was a nice creepy horror movie a different take on mm -hmm. what my family was and then you see this trailer and it's really got this dark mysterious tone to it elements of horror for sure some dramatic emotional heartstrings too you don't know exactly what's happening and i like that about the trailer the release date does make me a little nervous when come out it? september sometimes they just dump movies what that, time is what, when september it's, early or late i think early September. Yeah. I think September said so it's like the first week after yeah. you get all this. So maybe it's just it's a tonal shift into more classier fare, or maybe it's, hey, we don't have anywhere else to dump this and we don't want to wait until January. So just based on the trailer, I'm going to buy it tentatively yeah. because this thing could go off the rails very fast. I hope it's not the case. 
I like the talent involved. What about Jamie Dorner? You were worried about him? No, no. Huh? I, I, th I think he got dealt a bad hand with yeah. uh, with Fifty Shades of Grey. So, you know, I, I, I think I can be more forgiving of an actor that was in a movie I didn't like. But when you are the director of Prana 3D, and I just thought you missed the tone on that entirely, makes me a little squeamish. All right, well, I'll I'll defend Piranha 3D, the first one. I thought it was funny. It was a, it was a comedy film. It was crazy. Had tons of TNA and blood and crazy ass piranhas. Elizabeth Shue. Hey, look, I I had zero complaints. I thought it was really fun. Uh, so and I like the Hills Have Eyes, uh, the remake that he did. Um, so I think he's a good director. This trailer, though, I agree with you, Christian, is all over the place. I didn't yeah. know where it was going. He's like, kid's got some weird liquidy water walls. Like, what's and happening? A, a strange yeah. monster's paw. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. What is that mug, mug monster or whatever? So it's the straw creature. What is that going to oh, be? I thought like? that was Swamp Thing. Yeah, it's, Swamp it's Thing. Like a big but there's like yeah. enough visuals in there to make you go, I'm curious, but yeah. I still don't know. Then, it could be it, a mess. Is it like about child abuse? Right. What is it? It's creep. There's some creepy elements. It's not a straight up horror film. Is it, off, is it a family ABC after school special? What is it? But I'm still going to buy it tentatively. It's off the radar. It's like it's doing a two wheelie on us on the edge of a cliff, but I'm still interested. So I'll tell you that you mentioned Jamie Dorner. The what? No one's even mentioning Fifty Shades of whatever the, the sequel. It's like a fart in an elevator. Nobody even talks oh, wow. about it anymore. They, they, they made it already. Or what? what? I don't know. They they kind of they right? kind of stayed away from it oh, okay. though because like it was this whole big thing that was supposed to happen. But and remember that movie destroyed box office. No, but they're in it. I heard they already shot it. The, Maybe. All the original but actors, I just yeah. I just you don't hear. I, I mean, it's a good thing that we're not hearing about it. So I apologize for everybody for bringing it up. <laughs> is, is that what you should say if you fart in an elevator? Just Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Yellow, I guess. <laughs> Have you guys seen the Netflix series Broadchurch? Yes. This story is reminding me a lot of that. It is, but this this has super there's natural like, yeah, weirdo, like I'm in a floating right. world. What's that? You saw him like, what's that oh, behind the bed? A weird crawling thing. Right. I thought thing. it was going to be a That's mystery, a and then I see this like gremlin creature touch the stool. Yeah. I'm like, what? What's happening? Well, Ashley brought up a great series. See Broadchurch yeah, if you want to really cry a lot. Ashley, really. did you dig this trailer? Or was uh, it I was, just, like, I was really into it, uh, into it. I thought it was going to be like a mystery, like a whodunit kind of thing, but then it was throwing me off with the like supernatural like like, like stuff going it? on yeah. Yeah. but I, I, I buy it though i buy it okay cool well we're being very generous at the table today we'll see if that continues <laughs> over to our third story which involves an image all right the first image from jurassic world director colin trevorrow's the book of henry Oops. has been released showing the first look at the two brothers play by rooms jacob tremblay and midnight specials Jaden liberer the film is keeping the plot under wraps with trevorrow recently telling empire magazine that he wanted to do something that scared the hell out of him and return to smaller scale filmmaking empire says the movie concerns two brothers peter and child prodigy henry carpenter tremblay and liberer respectively who collaborate on a scheme to rescue their neighbor, Maddie Ziegler, from abuse at the hands of her police commissioner dad. Naomi Watts co-stars as the boy's single mother who offers love and support. The Book of Henry releases later this year. Schnett buyer sell the first look at the Book of Henry. What am I going to sell the, this little these two pictures of these two little kids like Goonies or something? Maybe no. they like Minecraft. Yeah. Well, I don't care. Play some Minecraft kids. I buy the picture. I don't know if I'm going to see this movie as like they rescue the girl from an abusive father. It's like it depends. I have to see the trailer. But, you know, I'm glad they got these kids. They look fun. You know, they look creative. They're building stuff like Minecraft and caves and stuff. Whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, I buy the picture because it looks like Home Alone 4. But clearly that's right. not the source material they were going with here. Remember when we first heard that Colin Trevorrow was working on his next project? Right. And it was called The Book of Henry. We knew nothing about it. The plot was being super secret under wraps. And then Empire tells us a pretty believable log line that sounds dark and a little horrific. Right. And I mean, it's dealing with abuse and these kids trying to do the right thing, but it's the police commissioner that's in charge of all. So it sounds like a very dramatic kind of storytelling. I buy the premise more than I buy this random picture that I'm seeing, but on the strength of that, and I like Colin Trevorrow, I think he's got a lot of potential and I am looking forward to seeing him his take on what this material is because it's totally different than his last project, Jurassic World. I'm excited about this, so I will buy the picture. Uh, yes. Oh, apparently, uh, Tremblay was not. In yeah, that's. I didn't. I didn't want to call you uh, out. You should have. I did. Because want to. When, when I saw it, I was like, "That doesn't look like Tremblay." But I'm looking at the thing. I was like, "I guess the kid's gonna be in." Well, guess what? Tremblay's not in that movie, but he's in this one. So I bought. Check that movie out. You get typecast as like he's the always in an abusive, abusive right? Really, you know, right. Like, but you, but you, you know a, he can certainly go down that path. Yeah. So now I want to know though who the hell we're not as generous as you for the Joshi oh, trailer. I'm I saw you know. What? I saw a lot of so for this right really? off the bat. Evil. 
Aniran says, you. Dumb as plot, great talent, but no one will save that one. Ouch. Uh, for the ninth Life of Louis Drax trailer, a lot of sells for this, and I saw a lot of hesitant buys as well. Elang Yulik says, Bye, I think Jamie Dorner, Dorner needs another chance after being Fifty Shades of Grey. I think this movie could be his break. And finally, for the Book of Henry first look, chat's also divided on this, but they do like the cast. Mega Iron Man 98 says, Bye, those two kids are really talented, especially Tremblay. All right. Well, before we move on to opening this week, yes, there's movies that come out on Friday and they're very exciting. But the biggest thing to happen on Friday is me taking on some punk named JTE in the movie trivia showdown. I usually just sit there and announce and know the answers ahead of time. This time I'm stepping into the cage going against who's somebody who's become my bitter rival in not only the ultimate showdown tournament, but now in the movie trivia showdown league. Me versus JTE. You guys can watch it this Friday on Collider video. Somebody made a picture and I I wasn't a fan of it. Which one? It was, it, they made a fan, because my name is Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. That's my fighter name. <laughs> right? So somebody made a picture of a bag of baby carrots with my face on it, and it says choking hazard. Damn. Oh. Like, I'm going to get Well, the reason they what? bring that up in the first match, to be fair to Little Evil, you <laughs> answered every question right. I threw and a you, perfect and game. And you still lost because of the betting round at the time. And if you haven't seen, do yourselves a favor and watch the trial of JTE. We put him on trial for, everyone thought he cheated against Ellis wow. the first time. Watch that. It's What's great. his name again? J Jay Z Little Evil. J JBX. Yeah, JBX Little Evil. All his right. name is Josh Tapia, but nobody. His parents have no idea that he's related to them because right. he just goes by JTE J Movie Smells or whatever his <laughs> show is. Movie, <laughs> yeah, movie, Stinks. movie. It's movie just I like can never put those a weird letter combination. Yeah. JV. I just can't get it. Do you yeah. have him beating me in this? Do you? Think um, he, you know, I think he's he knows his knowledge pretty well, but I I got the I got the edge on you, Ellis. Thank I think you very, very much. Very, I've very had a lot of baby carrots my day, and I've never choked on them. Christian, I'm not going to ask you for your prediction yes, yet. No. I believe it. Uh, <laughs> Ashley, do you think I can take down of Little Evil, JT? Of course you can. Of course She won't can. be here, though, so don't worry about they, it. Oh, oh, my God. She might show up. That oh would be the biggest upset God. in this Wait, You know, Ashley, there's free alcohol. I don't know if you knew that. Well, hey, then, oh, what? Free pizza, free beer, hey. but Ashley's probably got a dinner. She's going to be up in oh Ojai somewhere yeah. partying. <laughs> she's got a rager in Ojai. That's what I heard. <laughs> or maybe she's at the theater this weekend because there's a lot of good films opening, and now we turn it over to our friends at AMC Theaters for our next segment called Coming Soon. Opening this week, excuse me. What is opening this week? We've got two of them. First up is the BFG. Ten-year-old Sophie is in for an adventure of a lifetime when she meets the big friendly giant Mark Rylance. Naturally scared at first, the young girl soon realizes that the 24-foot behemoth is actually quite gentle and charming. As their friendship grows, Sophie's presence attracts unwanted attention of blood bottler, flesh lump eater, and other giants. After traveling to London, Sophie and the BFG must convince Queen Victoria to help them get rid of all the bad giants once and for all. Also coming out is the Purge election year. As a young girl, Senator Charlene Roan survived the annual night of lawlessness that took the lives of her family members. As a presidential candidate, Roan is determined to end the yearly tradition of bloodlust once and for all. When her opponents hatch a deadly scheme, the senator finds herself trapped on the streets of Washington, D.C., just as the last last latest purge gets underway. Now it's up to Leo Frank Grillo, her head of security, to keep her alive during the next 12 hours of mayhem. And I love the release dates on both of these movies because it is 4th of July weekend. 4th of July is, I believe, Monday, but you get that Independence Day, that big kind of movie with the BFG. I think I saw it last night. I think it's a great family film. It's not one of Spielberg's greatest movies of all time, but what what is he going to make now that's going to be as good as like a Jaws or a Schindler's List or Jurassic Park? It's a very well done movie. There's a lot of good comedy in there, a really good running gag that you are going to be a huge fan of, and the Giants look terrific. Like the motion capture they did with Mark Rylance. He does so much with his eyes. He's so expressive as this giant that cares for this little girl amidst all these other evil giants like the Blood Bottler and the Flesh Lump Eater. Once you see the movie, you're going to know why their names are like that. And it's it really is a treat for a lot of people to see, I think. As far as the Purge election year goes, there, there's no better time to open this movie than Independence Day because finally we're getting into the political aspects of the purge. The first two purge movies, it was just this accepted thing that, yeah, well, we need to do this for 12 hours every year. You can do whatever the hell you want, and it allows us to release all of our inner demons. But now this woman who's in a position of power wants to end the purge, and not all the powers that be appreciate that. 
the last Purge Anarchy was so good because it turned the horror premise, which I didn't think worked as well in the first one, into an action movie. Frank Grillo might as well have been wearing the Punisher outfit right. because he was awesome in that movie, and I'm looking forward to more great action when Christian and I see the movie tonight. Christian, I, my questions are twofold. I want to start with the Purge election year for you. Have you seen the Purge Anarchy yet? Because that was your homework. Right. And are you looking forward to Purge election year? Well, you know me. When it comes time to do homework, I was terrible in school. I haven't seen either Purge 1 or 2. What? Um, but I will mm. see the third one tonight. And I'm curious to how I will like this as someone who's never seen either one. I, and I have both of them on my DVR. I've had them on there for months. Will I go and see see them afterwards? That's the goal. That's what I hope happens, that after I see the third one, I really enjoy it. And I want to go back and see one and two. But I do like Frank Grillo. I did hear the comparisons to The Punisher from the second one. The second one was actually the one that everyone said, you can skip the first one, just watch the second one. Sure. But I do want to see this one. I'm curious to see what happens. Now, as far as BFG goes, it's Spielberg. I always want to see Spielberg movies, whether it's, you know, uh, BFG or, or the uh, Bridge of Spies, whatever it might be. If Spielberg's putting it out, I want to see it. We've talked about how he hasn't had a movie, like a big I mean, Lincoln obviously worked. There's other movies. I, I liked War Horse, but there's other movies that he has done in, in that and in the more serious kind of dramas that have worked. But the big budget blockbusters, he hasn't been doing them as well as he used to. So I'm hoping BFG will be one of those, or at least, like you said, a good family film that I can just go check out. So I missed it last night. I'm going to go see it this weekend. Schnepp, you yourself are a big, friendly giant. Mm -hmm. Are you looking forward to the movie version of your life story? Not particularly. Um, I'm looking forward to Ready Player One. That's a yeah. Spielberg movie that I'm really looking forward to. I've seen the trailers. I've seen what these characters look like. You know, I'll, I'll probably wait a couple weeks till I see BFG. The one that I'm really excited about is the Purge election year. I've seen the Purge, the first one. I've seen the second one, and I've been waiting for this one for a while. I like the premise of this series. I like the way they're going with the series. They're advancing the storyline and ratcheting up what is the Purge. And they're, it's you know, it's if they make a fourth and a fifth one, you, the story will continue. And I think it's evolving. So to me, that's the one I'm most excited about. I think I'm going to be seeing it tonight with you guys. So. Oh, very good. So. Well, we will all have a great time with a big bucket of popcorn. Ashley, if you're at an AMC this weekend because all your dinner dates canceled on you and you're just looking <laughs> at the landscape, which of these two movies would you um, rather see? Definitely The Purge. I've seen the first two. I love them. I think there's something about the storyline that's creepy. Like, what if this really happened? I mean, it would never really happen, but what if it really happened? I just love the story behind it, so definitely The Purge. Well, Wendy's coming, too. Wendy, what do you think about The Purge election year? Oh, I'm excited to see it. I like the first one okay. I really like the second one, so I'm, it's been a little, it's been a while. It's been a minute since mm -hmm. they've come out with the third one, so see what happens tonight. I think it could be the sleeper action hit of the summer and mm. BFG Great Family Fair, so good weekend to take everybody to the movie theater. And before we move on to Mailbag, we want to remind you guys about our ongoing contest where you only have a few days left to get to Comic-Con. You guys can enter right now. You can win badges for two, airfare for two, and hotel accommodations in San Diego this summer. You get to go to Comic-Con, and we're going to give you guys $250 in spending money to use however you please. Make sure you guys go to the link in this vid's description for all the details on how to enter the contest or simply go to collider.com looking forward to see two of your smiling faces in san diego this july now we go to mailbag this is the part of the show where we take your guys emails anytime you can email us collidervideo at gmail.com and ashley mova is going to read a couple of those and we also want to remind you that at the end of this show we're going to save some time for your live twitter questions go ahead and start tweeting us now at Collider Video. Ash, what's up first in our mailbox? Peter Ray, take Collider Crew, long time viewer, first time questioner, questioneer, question man, questioner, questioning, whatever. Ugh. <laughs> First time sending in a question. I wanted to ask you guys, what movie did you watch at a very young age? We're very afraid of it for a very long time and then watched it again years later and had a totally different experience. For me, it has to be Alien, 1985, age four, scared the shit loose, 1999, age 18. This is awesome. Peter from Pereira, Greece. <laughs> Pretty sure you just pronounced the I yeah. in yeah. that word. So well done, <laughs> Ashley. Uh, I would actually say one of my favorite movies of all time freaked me out as a kid and that would be jaws like i can watch jaws now or jaws the revenge which is a movie sure. i watched a lot when i was a kid 
and I can go to the beach and I can enjoy, I love going in the ocean, so I can do that. I can be in the water up to my neck and I'm totally fine, though I still think about the music a little bit. But when I was a kid, I would see Jaws and every summer we'd go to my grandma's place in New Jersey and she had a pool. I would not go in the deep end by myself. There's other people in the pool, I was fine, I could hang out in the deep end. But if it was just me swimming in the pool by myself, I was convinced that the grandma threw a shark in there and I didn't see it until it's too late. So Jaws is the one that really scared me as a kid and now I just haven't appreciation for what a phenomenal movie it is it's my favorite film of all time that takes place on planet earth christian how harloff how about you yeah i'm gonna steal one of your favorite movies uh and that's the exorcist i yeah! went the exorcist was one when i was a kid I was like nope not going near it thank you so much not doing it um but then later on it was von Sydow and watching just all the performances kind of went through that that movie and watching just for what linda blair did in that movie and just the it's a, it's a gorgeous movie. It is a terrifying movie, but as a film lover, it's a movie that you should definitely check out. Uh, but no, I didn't want anything to do with it when I was a kid. You know, The Exorcist is the opposite for me because when I saw it, I was a little too young to see it. I yeah. couldn't appreciate what was going on. I just thought, I saw a little girl puking and thought it was hysterical. <laughs> and then as I got older, I watched it again when I was in fifth grade. And that's when the gotcha. turn happened. And I didn't sleep for like a week. I, Jaws would have been a welcome relief to The Exorcist at that point in my life. How about you, Schnell? Yeah, man. I, actually, I was going to use Jaws, but I got a couple ones. Jaws, for me, scared me so much. I didn't want to go to the beach anymore. I was like, literally, I grew up right in West Haven, right along the beach. So it was like, I like, saw it from my bedroom window. It just, and it just every time me and my sister would go to, to the beach after that, after seeing Jaws, we were both like physically, mentally scarred about going into the water too far. We'd just go up to our waist and be like, no, you know, <laughs> start thinking you're seeing sharks. Uh, one that I remember as a kid seeing with my family was Godfather, the Godfather. And uh, there was some brutality in that movie that really freaked me out, like the horse's severed head in the bed. I remember not understanding it, what the hell's going on, because I didn't understand what it was. I didn't understand. It's like, this is what you get when you just, like, didn't understand anything really about the plot mechanics of The Godfather. Years later, seeing The Godfather and The Godfather 2, seeing what the masterpiece of filmmaking than storytelling that is, that's when you're like, same thing with Aliens. I remember, or Alien, sorry. I, I saw that when I was a little kid, and it scared me so much. I had bought the, the creature, the giant alien doll that they have that's worth like $3,000 now, and I had my dad return it because it, it was right next to my bed. <laughs> and I kept waking up with nightmares, and it was just <gasps> like with the double you know, the teeth, like, ah, you know? So I was like, I don't want it in my room anymore. What a wuss I was. And I would have had money to sell that thing. Probably would never sell it, though. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Ashley, do you have any movie that you saw when you were a kid yeah. that really freaked you out? I don't know why the labyrinth scared me so oh, labyrinth, much. The labyrinth's creepy, man. The one with David Bowie. Well, uh, yeah, but yeah, now, creepy. like now, it's it's not as scary. But when I was a kid, just I remember seeing. I don't. I don't even know if I just created this in my mind. This like caterpillar, and he's like in yeah. this wall. I just. It scarred me when I was a kid, oh, that's but now, a scene. like, yeah, yeah. now, come now, inside, have a cup of tea. Yeah, it like scarred me, but now it's not so scary. There's a lot of weird stuff for kids in that movie. You get to see a Muppet actually pee. You actually get to see yeah. the urine stream come out of a Muppet, which is a little weird <laughs> and a little over the yeah. top. And also David Bowie, but wearing very tight pants. Yeah, that I don't that know. That, I think that I would have put the the hands over your oh, the hands at over that my point. Eyes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If I was the babysitter, thank goodness I wasn't. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to our next question. Like Albert again. Rodriguez writes, "Hey Collider crew, I've been an avid fan since December 2000." 15. I love what you guys are doing. Nightmares is now my favorite show. You've got every day of my week covered. When hearing about the Old Man Logan film in the works, it made me realize that X-Men was Hugh Jackman's first American film. It made me go back and think about where some of today's biggest actors got their start. Jason Bateman in Teen Wolf 2, Michael J. Fox in Midnight Madness, Jennifer Aniston in Leprechaun, Brian Cranston in Amazon Woman on the Moon. Which movie do you still enjoy in which a big name actor got their break. For me, it would be Vince Vaughn and Rudy. That's a great call. And I always want to say Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura because that's when he exploded onto the scene. But right. he was in a lot of smaller movies. There's one called High Strung that he's in. He just pops in there. And it's like, oh, that's the guy from In Living Color. I wonder what he's going to do with his career. The two ones that always stand out to me, though, are in 1988 or 87's Beverly Hills Cop 2. Chris Rock is yeah. a valet. And uh, he's got a really great scene with Eddie Murphy because Eddie Murphy was a fan of Chris Rock. He saw him as a kid at a comedy club and said, hey, do you want to be in Beverly Hills Cop too? And Chris Rock, that's how he started to get national notice and then obviously went to Saturday Night Live from there. Another comic actor who was really and still is to this day got his start as a waiter in the movie The Blues Brothers. Anybody know who I'm talking about? 
The waiter in the Blues Brothers, the scene when they just keep drinking wine and they're just being, Elwood and Jake are just being very obnoxious and loud at this fancy no. restaurant. Paul Rubens is oh, one right, of their of waiters. Course. And uh, I was a huge fan of Pee Wee. And then we were watching that. And my dad pointed out, like, hey, look, it's Pee Wee. And that was one of his very first roles. So I'll go with Pee Wee and Chris Rock for the win. Snap, who you got? I got Nicole Kidman in Dead Calm. That's the first time I ever. Oh. She was. I think it was. She might have had a few films before that, but that's the first. You know, first film over here in America that crossed over. She was the star of, and she was. She made an impact on me back then, and followed her career since. So. She made an impact on you. Yes. Good to know. Okay, Christian Harloff, who you got? Um, well, the one that I was saying, the smaller role is Sam Rockwell from the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He was part of the Foot Clan. Uh, he's Whoa. just he's, he's, he's barely a, he's barely an extra. It's it's wow. uh, it's that. It's, but people remember him from that film. The other one is more a, a more detailed role, obviously, which was School Ties and Matt Damon. Uh, Matt Damon was the villain in that movie, and that was the first time I kind of remembered him and how he came out. But the, the other one I would try and remember, I don't remember the name of the movie, but it's uh, you can definitely find the scene, and it's it's Harrison Ford as a bellboy, and he he come, and it's his first appearance ever. He walks out. I'm trying to find the name of the movie, but is he it walks the conversation? Out. No, no, no. Or no the he, package or something like that. No, he it's not he walks out and he says, "Paging Mr. Ellis." Paging Mr. Wow. Ellis, uh, and he and he walks out. You can find it. Just type in Harrison Ford Bellboy on uh, YouTube. I forget the name nice. of the film. Yeah, Harry and I have been good friends to this day. What's up, buddy? I still dig the earring. Okay, that is all for mailbag. Now we move on to live Twitter questions. We have no idea what's coming at us. Hopefully, it's good stuff. What do we got, Ash? Bellhop, not Bellboy. All right, Alexander Burton writes the Jennifer Lawrence Chris Pratt film Passengers is five months away, and we've seen nothing. WTF. Uh, WTF indeed. I mean, look, it's not the it, it's not a huge blockbuster kind of movie, so I wouldn't expect to see it in the heat of summer. I think that once we get into fall, you're going to see your first tease as to what Passengers is going to be. But mm -hmm. Passengers, despite the fact that it has two huge stars and a science fiction premise, I don't think it's going to be that blockbuster type movie. It might do very well, but it's not going to be marketed like that. So it makes sense that you're not going to see it amidst all these other huge movies that are coming out right now. I would put money on seeing it the very end of the summer, mm. but probably set early September is when you might see your first look at Passengers. What do you think, Christian? You're shaking your head violently. No, but it's just not the time to promote it yet. There are certain movies, you know, when you get a Rogue One or you know, the, the big movies when you're like, well, how come they haven't started promoting this? Because it's the big budget movie that you know you want to get the, the word out there this is a movie that is going to benefit if it, if a trailer came out for that movie now it'd be forgotten yeah. with all it'd be lost and all the stuff that that's coming out still for the rest of the summer there's more suicide squad trailers to be had there's all these different things that are still coming out and then like i just mentioned with rogue one this is a trailer when when's the release they release it like, uh, it comes out the same week as assassin's creed in december which we've gotten a trailer for but assassin's creed is a huge tentpole movie. that's my point is that so right around i i would say you're probably gonna get the first trailer say come like late August, September. Schnapp, is part of the reason why we haven't seen a trailer for this yet is because we just want to let Jennifer Lawrence and X-Men and all these other things just, just have that die down for a little bit before we start promoting her in a film again? I think so, and I also agree with Christian. I mean, it's you don't need to promote this kind of a film. It's a smaller film. It's a... It's you know it's two main big stars, but that, there's not a giant amount of other people are going to be involved in it. It's them locked away on a spaceship. They both get awoken, you know, early, and they just have to hang out. So it's like I, I think it's going to be a smaller film, and it's going to you know it'd be probably I would even gauge that they might be pushing them for Oscar nomination type of things. And so I think we'll see a, a trailer like yeah, like you said, late September. But it's it's going to be run off of the, the power of those two stars. That's what it's you know based off of so. all right what's our next question ben likes movies right take hey, letter what classic film do you think should be remade what classic film should be remade? Uh, look, I'm not a huge fan of hearing anything's going to be remade, and then I can usually be won over. Like something like uh, the Magnificent Seven, I was like, yeah, that should totally be remade. So why not stick with the numbers and go with the Dirty Dozen? I'd like to see another more modern take on something that source material, which is very, very awesome to check out. What do you got? Uh, Independence Day. It's a movie that came out in 1996. Oh, I boy. think it's about time to make a oh, oh. ah. E. Uh, Forbidden Planet. It starred Leslie Nielsen. It had really cool special effects, amazing matte paintings. The storyline is an incredible storyline. So if you haven't seen Forbidden Planet, definitely see the original 1950s version with Robbie the Robot. But I think the the idea and the premise would really fit well right now. And it had a serious Leslie Nielsen. Yes, a very serious. serious. Actor. Yeah, he was not. not 
Okay, A. Clay <laughs> writes, which animated film has the better Oscar chances, Zootopia or Finding Dory? Oh, it's a good, it's question. A good question, and I'm rooting for you, Zootopia. I really enjoyed you. I think Finding Dory has the better Oscar chances simply because it is a Pixar movie. It's beloved, and I thought that the movie was a little bit better than Zootopia. Zootopia had a lot of fun in there. I love seeing all the animals. Look at the release date. Look at the fact that it is Pixar, and they are a juggernaut. The Oscars fall in love with whatever Pixar puts out. It's a sequel, so that might dock it a little bit, where Zootopia's original material, I still think Finding Dory is going to be the one that takes gold at the Oscars, unless something else comes out later this year that blows me away. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you. I'm, I think that Zootopia is going to be the one that wins it. I think that you'd be surprised because you think the Oscars, like, oh, they don't pay attention to stuff. They obviously, they do pay attention to numbers. Dory's going to have big numbers too, but Zootopia, the amount of money that movie made, but the amount of critical response that mm -hmm. it got, it was it was original. It wasn't a sequel. I think that all these things are going to play into that. And I think that Dory, even though the, crit the critics did like Dory very much, a lot of the critiques was that it was good, just wasn't as great as the first one, as where the, uh, the response for Zootopia has been the opposite of that. Everyone has thought that movie was incredible. I actually liked Zootopia way better than I liked Dory. Uh, I did like Dory, but I thought that Zootopia was a better movie all the way around and another original film. So I think Zootopia would be the one to beat it out. Bare knuckle brawl here, yeah. late in movie talk. Who's winning it, Schnepp? It depends on who wants to cry. I mean, sad fish movie is what I keep hearing a lot of the insider people calling <laughs> calling it sad fish movie. A lot of children crying, where do we? Just leaving the theater destroyed, uh, buckling your entire family unit what are you system. About? Uh, you know, I just heard it's a very weepy drama. It's not. I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait to go in and cry my ass off. Where did the fish go? Uh, sad fish movie. Well, that's the extended yeah. cut. Hashtag, yeah. The extended cut <laughs> adds additional edition. scenes of trauma with yeah. fish. Um, and the other ones, like, you know, animals dressed up as people and they all have fun. So. I'd go with animals dressed up as people, but I haven't seen Finding Dory yet. So. Okay, well, check it out. I think it's a little more of an emotional pull than what you get with Zootopia, but we'll have to wait until That's whenever the Oscars That's what I'm saying. Like, sad Fish movie's probably going to win, I think but Zootopia I'm going has with a Zootopia. big emotional Zootopia pull. was really political. Yeah. Like, really political. It was. So. Uh, good message. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we have one more in our message segment. What do we got? Okay, Ethan Kanistra writes, are there any categories in the Golden Globes or Oscars <laughs> that you think should be removed? Golden Globes or Oscars. Uh, I think it's really ridiculous. I think it's a cop out to have the two different segments. They're, they're changing the, the Golden Globes somewhat, yeah, where it's no longer the comedy and musical. For where, the, where the Martian won for best right. comedy, comedy or musical. It's like, what are you hmm. talking about? Hey, can we just remove the Golden Globes entirely? How about that? No, because it's a drum it's a more fun, fun show. Nobody takes I think it it's seriously. A, I think it's a better. Yeah. I think it's a more fun show well, than then, the Oscars, but the Oscars take are it more less seriously. Then yeah. everyone knows it's fake. Every, it's yeah. like sixty-one people voting for it as opposed to like six thousand. Right. I mean, look, Oscars I think we like, could say to take all of these award shows a little less seriously, yeah. but I, I don't want to take any of the categories away because a lot of people work very hard mm. on movies, and you deserve to be recognized in some capacity. So I don't want to take any awards away. I just think that sometimes it can be considered cheap when it's like, well, we like these movies, but they're not as good as these movies necessarily, so we're just going to create a different category. Just do a top 10, or just do 10 nominees like what the Oscars do. Or just do. split That's it up, not say. comedy or musical, make a musical yeah. or a comedy, and it's like if three musicals came out this year, then you're just voting on those three. It doesn't matter. They're fake awards anyway. Just just to get stars and big people there. It's a, it's a, it's a reason to have a party. Add more awards, as I'd say. But the question is, can you take one away? No. You can only add. Christian, we taking anywhere? No, I think I would add some stuff the same way you guys are because I agree with the what they do well, the Golden Globes, is that they have that comedy category. That is a that is a category the Oscars should have. The right. Oscars should have three categories. They should have best comedy. They should have best casting because casting agents are always looked down. Whether or not it's on a so, small character uh, somewhere, right. a small category, it should be in the main categories. And voice over acting should be recognized as well. Those are the three I think that should be recognized in the Oscars. But as far as the Golden Globes with comedy, that what they're doing now give like train wreck it should have won last year it should have been but it didn't because they wanted to give matt damon and ridley scott accolades and because they weren't going to win any of the big awards and it was it was bs and yeah. it's like you're you're taking away the applause that you're getting for having a comedy category in the first place yeah. give it to a rifle ca a comedy i think they're going to do that i agree with you schnapp it, musicals Let's move. Like, if there aren't enough musicals, then do the same thing you do with anime. There's two musicals, then two musicals get it. Yeah. If not, there's one musical and just give them the award. I mean, the Golden so, Globes has the chance now because <clears throat> last year was so stupid. 
they have the chance to redeem themselves and have a, a horror genre. They could have a science fiction. They, I mean, look at all the different genres. It's not just comedies. I mean, yeah. there's like so many different ones that they can give an award out to and get a bunch of like, you know, hey, we would never get this guy, but we're giving him an award, so right. now he has to show up. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Just do that, Golden Globes. Those you Golden morons. Globes, like the actual award, it can't cost that much money to make. You can go it's to like a trophy seven store and get them bucks. involved. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be on. fine if you do a little more. We don't want to take anything away. All right, that's all the time we have for today on Collider <laughs> Movie Talk. I want to thank everybody both behind the scenes and up front here with me on the panel. Mr. Schnepp, where can everybody check you out and where can they find your take on Batman versus Superman, the ultimate cut? I'm glad you asked me that and prepped me to answer it because I could tell you. Now you um, have to answer I it. I have to say it. You can find it on Collider dot com go over and check that out it's a collider uh, youtube space it's the uh, heroes spoiler special where me frosty and berto and dennis gave our opinion on the ultimate edition of batman v superman dawn of justice check that out also check out collider nightmares me and clark and perry and mark are all going to be on there t doing a horror a little horror flavor that's collider nightmares later today tomorrow collider heroes Big uh, big news coming out tomorrow, and you can find me on uh, just uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter. I can barely finish what I'm sorry, I'm trying to say. At John Schnapp. He ran Goodbye. out of gas. I ran the, out, baby. Goodbye. Finally Goodbye. Ran gotcha. out of yeah. people. Okay, Christian, where can everybody find you? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Christian Harloff. Make sure that you also check out uh, Jedi Council, which is every Thursday. Pretty sure we have Ralph Garman on this week, which is going to be a great nice. show. Big fan of Ralph Garman. Guy can talk is Star Wars, and I'll see if I can get him to do Pacino. Um, that's <laughs> it. Make sure you check out this guy taking on JTE on Friday. Who is uh, who's who's in the announcing booth? Since I'm stepping out, uh, myself and Campia. Oh, good. Yep. Okay. Oh, oh, that's one thing to announce because I didn't I didn't say this. July eighth next week. The big title match goes down between the reigning champ, Mark Yodi Riley, putting the title on the line against dangerous Dan Merle. It all goes down Damn. next Friday. That's going to happen on the Shmoda. Well, hopefully they'll have a new contender to look out for, this guy right here. Fingers crossed. All right, Ashley, where can everybody find you besides at the Movie Trivia Schmodown live taping this week? Uh, on Twitter and on Instagram, at Ashley Moba. Happy Tuesday, guys. Happy Tuesday, indeed. Thank you guys for spending a little bit of your Taco Tuesday with us. Make sure you guys go to amctheaters.com. That's where you go for all the latest box office and showtime ticket information. Go to collider.com. Go ahead and bookmark it because that's where we go for a lot of our movie stories that we bring you guys each and every weekday. And, of course, subscribe right here. Collider video on YouTube to catch Jedi Council, to catch Heroes, to catch the Movie Trivia Showdown, and of course, Movie Talk, as well as all the other programming available 24-7. My name is simply Mark Ellis, and I'm at Mark Ellis Live. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.